Eileen just said hi. Hi, Eileen. I'm getting ready to try to do a painting. I'm up on a, on a hill in Ripley, Ohio at the historic John Rankin house, and um, I'm doing just a couple things behind the scenes before I get started, but if you give me just a minute, I'll um, hopefully have something kind of interesting you could watch. Okay, good morning. Let me turn this around so I could wave and say hi to you. Hey, good morning. I'm um, doing something a little bit different today. Um, it's been a while since I've been outside with my paint and, and worked on a painting, and a, a friend invited me to come to Ripley, Ohio to do a little bit of plein air painting. So I'm at the Rankin house. I'm gonna flip, turn this around so you can see the location. I'm at the Rankin house which is in the town of Ripley, Ohio. If you look behind me, you can see the village village of Ripley. And um, this house is a, is a historic uh, park. Uh, way back when there was slavery in Kentucky, this house was one of the important stops at, of the Underground Railroad. The Reverend John Rankin um, did a whole lot to help other people escape slavery and, and to... to eventually worked their way up to Canada where they could be tr truly, truly free. And um, one of the, the advantages, this house was up on a hill, so the people back there in Kentucky could look at the house and they'd see signals, I believe it was by lanterns, they could tell whether it's a good time to try to cross or not cross. Um, and, and I always love coming up here. It's a real pe peaceful place and, and the view's beautiful, the history's really, really inspiring. So. Today I'm going to do a plein air painting, and I'll show you my sketch before I get started. So, so I've got my real fancy sketchbook here, and I just took a pen and drew the view. I, I'd like to get both the house and the river, and it's such a big view that um, all the, I should have brought a panoramic panel but I didn't. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is do a, I think it's called a diptych. When you have two paintings that when they're combined, they make one big painting. So this side will be the Rankin house and this side will be the river view. And like I told you earlier, I haven't done this in a long time, but if the, the vision in my head works out on this, on this board, it should be really awesome. So I'm just going to set the camera up. Let me raise it. Let's see. Let me flip it around. Let's flip it around. I picked a spot by the woods. Hopefully I'll stay in the shade for most of the day. My goal is to paint this in three hours. And I'll do as much as I can until my battery goes bad. Let's see. I want to say if it's set up like this, you can see the canvas. I wish I had a wider, wider lens. Well, I guess the painting's what we'll, we'll look at. So here you can see the painting and you can see my palette. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the painting, so I might not get to answer everybody's questions, but I am gonna take a look. I've got my iPad here and I could see, oh, I do have a few questions, or it doesn't look like questions, but um, it looks like just comments. Leah says, what a perfect day for painting. It is a perfect day for painting. You'd think I planned it this way. Um, we, we did look at the weather, so that had a lot to do with, with coming here today. Um, don't you work in Ripley? Or are, We might even be able to see your house. Well, no, we can't see all the way to Maysville, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, you could see me right here. Uh, Karen says, hey Ken, this is very cool that you're doing a live stream. Love the scenery. I love it too. This, this, I don't know if you've been to 
the Rankin House in Ripley before. I'm, I'm sure you have because I know you're friends with people who live in Ripley. Um, this is a really cool place. I, it's easy to find inspiration here. And uh, Tanya says, love it. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Hopefully we love it at the end and it's not, not a big mess. And then Marty says, nice. Well, thanks. Let's, like I said to Tanya, let's hope it looks nice once I get started. So, so I've got my sketch here. I'm going to get one of my bigger brushes and a little bit of turpentine. And I'm just going to color the, the wood panel. So one of my favorite color combinations is orange and blue. And if you know much about color mixing, orange and blue will make a brown. They, they're complementary colors and they sort of balance each other out. You don't get a color, you just get kind of like a mud when you mix two complementary colors. And my, my only goal right now is just to cover the canvas or to cover the panel. I don't want it to be white. Working on a, on a stark white board is kind of tricky and not, not the way that I like to work. So this, this is just toning the, the surface. Can you all see me okay? I'm not sure what you're looking at. Let me see. If you're able to see what I'm working on, give me a holler and let me know just so that I know. Or I guess I could stop being lazy and I could just look. Yeah, it looks like you could see pretty good. All right. This little easel wasn't really designed to hold two panels at once, so I'm holding the board while I'm while I'm working so I'm just gonna cover this it's just got a little layer of oil oil paint on it and um, I might take a rag and wipe it just a little bit I don't need a lot of paint like I said I just want it to be a little bit A little bit toned, I think, is what the artist would call it. Now I'm going to just wipe some of that off. I don't need a lot of paint on the board. Okay, so okay, so now I'm ready to use my sketch as a reference. Okay, Marty says, yes, we can. So it looks like we're good to go. You can see the canvas. I can see the beautiful view in front of me. I'm going to get a smaller brush. Let's see. I'm a little bit nervous. My The brush I really want might be at my house. So I'm going to improvise and use the brush that's here. You know, there's nothing like doing this kind of thing with an audience. If you weren't here watching, you'd think I was real organized and I meant to, to do things that way. But, but um, So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start just drawing out the shapes that make up this, this scene. And um, it doesn't really have to be exact. I'm just sort of designating where where those shapes are going to go. There's a hill. I can't believe I'm doing this. I usually don't like painting with people watching just because I have a hard time focusing but maybe I've become kind of like a show off with, with all these live videos since I can't see you in person. All right, and we've got this tree in the foreground. I'm, I'm planning this to kind of look like 
If they were separated, the two paintings could stand on their own. But I, I can't imagine splitting these two paintings up. So there's the tree. And then we're going to keep going down the hill. Let's see, some more trees. Let's see. I think that shape needs to be the right shape. background we've got trees and then further back it's more like hills and the river oh maybe I'll move this can uh oh I don't know where to put it I need both sides behind the, there we go with the brush behind the panel so now the river is going to come out of this corner it's just sort of a winding river yeah, oh yeah and it connects to that hill it's kind of like putting a puzzle together You want the painting to have a flow of some background trees <clears throat> here. Kind of work themselves down to the river. Okay, now back here, this is a field, so it's flat. You want to. You can almost see the house when I first moved to Kentucky a million years ago. I lived in a little farmhouse right by the river, and um, it's almost in this view. If the trees weren't there, you could see the house. Let's see, one hill. All right, let's say. Now I'm getting kind of nostalgic thinking about. When I first moved here and everything was fresh and exciting, it's still kind of fresh and exciting. Since I've been stuck with the pandemic, I'm discovering things right under my nose that I've lived around for years and years and never really noticed because I was busy running, running around. All right, so I think I've got my composition more or less the way I, I like it. Um, let me look and see. So Beth says, Beth says, you are brave. I could never paint with viewers. Thanks for sharing. <clears throat> well, thanks. I, I don't know if brave, brave is the right word. I've learned, like, the more I make art that, um, I don't know. It, it's something I like to share. I, I think sometimes there's this mystery about art making where people think, you have to be really special and 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 gifted to be able to make art. And and hopefully when I do this live and you see me making mistakes, um, I'm not special. I just like making art, and I do it over and over and over. And I always make mistakes, but the more I do it, the better I get. And um, and and that's why I like to share, just to show people a little bit about the process and demystify it and, and ideally ideal you all to, to make art art also so Karen just says I wonder if it's an indigo bunting singing nearby that's a good question I the indigo bunting is one of my favorite birds and I know that they are around here so so it very well could be I, I wish I knew the calls the calls better and then Carol Darley says, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Carol. Um, let's hope it stays awesome. I'm going to get back to painting. I've got my 
outline on the canvas. So now's the fun part. I'm going to start laying some some values in in here. I, I want to decide what's going to be dark and what's going to be light before I get into the colors. So I'll take this brush and I'm still using that mix of, of blue and orange that kind of makes a muddy gray and um, I'm trying to decide what will be dark and what will be light and I know I want the house to stand out. So one way of making things stand out is by putting light against dark. So I'm going to wipe a little bit of the paint away with a clean brush. Wipe some paint off so that I can have that contrast. Bottom of this tree looks kind of dark. Here. And there's a shadow that kind of helps you get the shape of the hill. So I'm going to lay that shadow in. Now when I get higher up on the tree, it's light, lighter. But against the sky, it's dark, so I'm going to just keep making this tree dark. These panels are threatening to move on me. Okay. What's that? Um, all of this is sort of dark. The sky is pretty light, so... Trying to wipe the paint away. I might take my rag. Wipe this way. This background is kind of dark. These panels are going to fall, and I'm going to cry, and you all are going to be watching, and this is going to be real entertainment. But I'm going to try not to not to do that until the painting looks really good because that's when when it really hurts all right so that's darker the river's pretty light in this area we'll keep it kind of dark Big brush back. There's a shadow from the trees where I'm sitting. I'm going to make this dark. And
this is a little darker. This side is darker than this side. background is a lot darker. And while I have that dark paint on the brush, I'm just going to push a little more paint around. Okay, I'm going to step back and just take a look at the big picture. I'm going to grab this camera so you can step back too. Do you see what I'm trying to do? And so far I haven't used any color. It's just um, a mix of, of orange and blue that makes a mud. And I'm just working out, I've worked out the composition and I've worked out the values more or less. So now I'm getting ready to lay the color in. And um, an interesting thing about this, I have a red house that's surrounded by green. And red and green have a special relationship where they, they're complementary colors. They, they contrast each other. So. So I'm trying to think how I want to use that red to make the house really stand out and also not be overwhelmed by all that green at the same time. Um, so let me put my camera back on the board. I'm going to look and see if you all have any questions before I start painting again. Um, let's see. Let's see if anybody's watching. Okay, I've got a comment from Ursula. She says, yay, I love your little paintings. Well, thank you, Ursula. I, I was meaning to show you some pictures of little paintings, and, and I got sidetracked. I'm not very, very um, organized all the time. Simple things can be, be hard. So, okay, so no more comments or questions. I'm going to get back to painting. Okay, so like I said, that, there's that special relationship between red and green. Um, I think I'm going to make the sky a greenish blue. I'm going to really use a lot of green. So, so for my sky, I'm going to lay this greenish blue down. Actually, a little bit of yellow at the the point where I think it's probably pollution, but where the hill meets the sky, you have this real light yellowish color down along here. I'm going to lay some. Yellow. This should look real like there's a lot of green. Even the yellow is picking up some of that blue, blue green. And my idea is that everything will be green except the house, which will be red. And that should bring it out and make it pop. There's some white clouds. I'm going to make them yellow instead of white. And, and to sort of stick with that green. everything being green. So, got some green. And this hill in the background is lighter than the hills in the foreground. I'm going to use the same green I'm using in the sky. For it, as you get closer, like this hill, 
there's a little bit more grain. So I'm going to grab a little grain. You see how this is darker than that? As, as things go further back, they get a little bit lighter. And they also get a little bit bluer. Might add a little more white and lighten that. I don't want it that dark. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just laying colors down. I'm trying to use what I see as a guide, but I'm also thinking about how I want to approach this as a painting. So it's it's not strictly it, it, it's not strict to life. Like with this yellow, light yellow. I notice there are a few fields that also have that color of light yellow. So I'm going to lay them down. Here and then here along the river you've got that light yellow. You also have it up here on the hill, so I'll lay some yellow down here. You know what, I like this yellow so much, I'm going to make all the grass yellow. Maybe not all the grass. Alrighty. I want to get back to the sky. I feel like it's kind of patchy looking. So let me get some more of that greenish blue and, and just cover this space. Get some paint on it. I can I can adjust the colors, but I'd like to kind of establish what's going on here color-wise. Right, so that's going to be blue. And then the river is reflecting the light of the sky. So I'm going to use similar colors. Need a little more of that light green. Alright, so let me get some more. It looks like towards the back it's more blue, and then it gets kind of that white yellow around this spot. And then as you get even closer to the foreground, it's back to that lighter blue. Alright, and I'm just going to lay some Or blue out while I've got it on my... I've been making brush strokes this direction, but for some reason I think of the sky as moving this direction. So I might just go over the paint a little more, pulling the paint up. Yeah, for some, I like the energy of the, the brush strokes going that direction, so that's what I'm going to do.
now I'm ready to get into get back into the foreground. So it's going to be a pretty pretty dark green. And for me, green has always been a tricky color to paint with. It um can look really weird right out of the tube. Like if you look at that. Well, now that I say that, I kind of like that, but. Usually I like to tone the color, the green down a little bit, and I'll add a little bit of brown, brown to the green. And for what it's worth, my favorite brown is burnt sienna. I, I just love it. It's it's a nice warm brown. I could do a whole painting with just burnt sienna. It's my personal favorite. Now this is the same color as the foreground. I'm going to add a little bit of white though. Not that much white. Let's get some more, more green then. Next time I'll be more prepared. I'll either have the right size panel or an appropriate easel that could hold hold two panels at once. Now that I'm looking at this, the river extends a little more than I initially sketched it. So I'm going to clean the brush. up some more of those river colors. I'm just going to put some white here. Extend that bend in the river. Oh yeah, that's that's what I should have done from the beginning. I kind of like how in the sky my brush strokes are going up and down, but in the river I want the brush strokes to go side to side. getting a little muddy. I'm going to get away from that river and um, let's see, this tree in the foreground is what I need to work on next. And it's lighter than the background, so I'm going to use that green that a lot of the trees have, but instead of brown I'm going to add yellow. Ah, well I don't like that. Maybe I'll add a little orange. A little orange and yellow. Yeah. yeah, I like this color. Ooh, yeah. All right. So, so these are the highlights where the sun's hitting the tree. And leaves point all kinds of different directions, so you don't. Let's see, that, I'm probably happy with that. I'm going to put some of this in the background, too. And I like it so much, I'm going to put it in the grass as well. Oh, yeah, it's really nice in the shadow. You see what's happening? Now, with these brush strokes, I want them to kind of follow the contour of the hill so you get a feeling of being on a hill. Alright. 
everything's green. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sure that's allergies and not, not COVID, but if I did have it, I don't think you'd get it through, through Facebook. Um, I'm just gonna put a little more of that green everywhere. So one challenge this time of year, when you paint outside, everything's green. You just have green on green on green. <clears throat> and finding a way to, to paint it and stay interesting is, is a little tricky. You know, in the fall, when you have all kinds of colors, It's a little bit easier on the color color way. Let's see, so we've got trees along the river. I think for the shadow parts of this tree, I'm going to use a really strong blue. It's not what I really see, but it's just kind of an intuitive guess. Remember when I was talking about how when you have green on green on green, sometimes it could be a challenge to keep it interesting. But, um, Maybe this blue, it's turning green. But... So now you all know, I don't know what I'm doing either. I'm just, I just show up. Show up and paint. Let me step back. I'm gonna, I wanna step back and look at this from a distance. And I'll bring you all along so you can see What's coming together? That's looking, that's looking pretty good. If I don't want to compliment myself too much, but when I'm standing real close to it, it, it's harder. What, what do you say? When I'm standing real close, I don't see the big picture, I guess is what happens. But when I step back and see it like this, I'm feeling pretty good about the painting. Okay, my friend Betsy's walking this way. She's the reason I'm up here. Betsy, Betsy's an artist, and she, she likes to work outside and invited me to come, come over. Um, she might come and talk to us. I'm going to put this down. You all can look at the painting, and um, she might look over, over my shoulder. She could give me some insight on what she sees that might be working or not. How's the painting going? That's a nightmare. I just doused it in alcohol. Uh-oh. Can well, you work on top of that? Or yeah, is that... it's drying. Okay. Oh, okay, using two panels. Okay, that's looking good. Yeah, I wish I had a... What do you call it? A portrait? A landscape or No. Panoramic oriented. Right. Pot. I'm going to turn this around. Acrylic. Can I put you on the spot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, we've got to wear masks if we're... No, we're in air, air. Well, I'm going to wear my mask. Yeah, you wear your mask. I don't want everybody coming after me because I got Betsy sick. No, no. I think it's okay. So, I think we're six feet apart. Okay. Yeah, we're well, social distancing. Maybe I should turn it back on the paintings so people don't <laughs> see us doing the bad. Yeah, you can edit, right? Bad. Well, it's live. So oh, whoever's wow. watching is so listening to us carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the fun, uh, fun of it. So, oh dear. so what do you think? I, I, I want to do the green and red thing. 
where it's mostly green and then the house will be red. Right. And to get them to yeah. get them That'll to compliment and, and pop. Where's our mystery guest? Well, <laughs> she's notoriously late. So yeah. Okay. So it's an hour and a half from when we said we'd be here. So um I messed up. I should have stuck with the tree and once again I put too much in the composition and then I get lost in the composition. Uh oh. Yeah. So I might okay. be doing that too. So this was Okay. Oh well. Wow. Right. Oh that's nice. But then I doused it with alcohol. And this is it now. Well, that's even nicer. Now it's all soft and you'll go in with like lights to right, bring Right, the... because they call that local color. Okay. I, I put local color in and then I did it with alcohol. And then Ooh. that's supposed to get your light and darks in there, but I don't know. Because I didn't, I got lost in the composition. Sure. Which is bad. So anyway, I thought I'd walk away from it. Walk away from it, walk away from it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm in my own struggle here trying to figure out. I'm listening to Barbara Streisand. Well, that's nice. Uh, my mom likes her a lot, so I thought that's what I'd listen to. Yeah, well, all right. Happy painting. My alcohol should be dried by now. Thanks. Yeah. That looks good. So what are you going to put on this side? Are you going to put... Are you going to go red there? Or are you going to do something? There's not going to be any red. Maybe the red of the, um, the bank. Yeah. You see the bank? There's that orange. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might have a little bit of red. I'm glad you asked that. That's a good... Yeah. I, let, I mean, if you're going to do it as one painting. Right. Right. I would think you'd have to, you know. Well, I wanted them to be one, like a diptych. They, that's... Oh, yeah. Two you paintings. You would have had a, a tri-crypt what I took on your panels, but you couldn't well, have no, there's... three anyway. It's struggling to stay on there. Right. Those panels might pop off. Well, I think that. when I have the painting perfect, that's when it'll fall in the grass and get covered in bugs and grass. And hey, speaking of that, did you bring bug spray? I'm definitely next time. Sweat bees love me. Uh oh. They're up there. Well, I'm Sweat glad bees. they like you. I've been safe so far. I, I've got a little bit of patchouli on, and right. I think that right. help. can be a deterrent. Right, right. I have just like them. Um, called sake okay hmm. and they might like it it seems like <laughs> it yeah you know but okay all righty well look Happy at the birds painting. oh look at that that's so pretty you all missed it there's a i don't know what kind of bird it is but i don't know i don't think it was a vulture because it had i don't know it was big but it looked graceful but like could it be like a heron would they be up this far it might have been a heron you know, it could have been a long, heron. You know. We'll say it. Okay. Alright. Back to it. Okay. Yeah, well, this is we live a hard screaming, life, don't, don't we? Don't worry. <laughs> what? You hear me screaming, don't worry. Well I'll I'll if you need help, scream and I'll like Uh oh. Are you all still there? I'm going to look and see if anybody has any questions. Uh, let's see. Questions or positive re constructive criticism. Let's see. So, I don't, she's gone, so I can get back to breathing. And. There might be some problems with my internet. You all might not even see me doing this. I heard there's some hackers trying to, to shut down the United States internet and, and we're getting, getting, um... Okay, I do have some comments. Let's see. So Kate asks, you up on Rankin Hill? I am. Yeah, you have a good eye. That's exactly where I am. <clears throat> and and then it looks like Kate followed up again said keep up the good work I'd love to see Betsy's final product too have a great day y'all well I might ask her if we could look over her shoulder we could see what what she's working on um, Kate also says oh I see you're on the other side of the house yeah 
I um, usually do the other view when I come up here and paint, but because of the location of the sun, I wanted to be in the shade, and I also wanted to try a perspective that's a little bit different. So, so I thought I'd come close to the to the woods. Um, Judith says beautiful landscape. Well, thank you. I, I don't know if you're talking about my painting or the beautiful view that that I'm looking at, but um, the, the view is definitely beautiful. And Carol says inspirational. Exactly what I needed this morning. You're a wonderful instructor. Well, thank you. Well, thanks a lot. I'm glad glad this helped set a, mood, a good mood for your morning, and, and I hope the rest of your day, day goes really well. Really well as well, Carol. And Judith says, looks good. Green is difficult. I agree. Green, green can be a challenge, but I love the color green, so... And Judith also says, perspective is really good, and hi, Betsy. Betsy's on the other side of the house. She won't hear it, but um, I'll let her know you said hi. Maybe next time you could come, come and paint with us. So Ursula and Jody and Judith all say, I can see you, but you lose the sound sometimes. Okay, yeah, I don't know. This is all through my cell phone. I'm up on a hill, so hopefully I have a good reception. But, um, you know, with cell phones, you never know. And then Jody says, I like watching you work a lot because I know nothing about painting, and you make the process look accessible. Well, Jody, if you don't know anything about painting, I'd know just a little bit more than you do. But the big thing is just, you know, the way to learn more is get some paint and put it on stuff so I promise I'm nothing special I just I just like doing it so I, I get paint and I get things to paint and and go at it and um, hopefully you'll do the same and then Jody also says the bird songs behind you are beautiful they are beautiful I um sometimes I like to listen to music while I'm working but up here I'll, I could just listen to Listen to the bird songs. Okay, I'm going to put this down and get back to painting. I think it's time to get rid of my hoodie. The sun's out and it's starting to warm up. Okay, so let me put this back on the painting. All right, we flipped it around. There's the John Rankin house. There's the Ohio River. Here's my painting. I'm trying to capture the really grand scene. Okay, now we're going to do some bricks. So, it's said that the house is red, but it's, it's probably going to use a lot of orange to get that color. I'm going to take some orange and some burnt sienna and a little bit of, oh, maybe I'll do purple. I'm going to put a little bit of purple in there. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the color I wanted. So now I'm going to put this on the shady side of the house. That might be too light. Let me add a little bit of white. Remember, I want to get that contrast. I want the house to stand out, so the background needs to be darker than the foreground of the house. I might even add a little more white here. On the save room, there's a door right out there. I might put these windows in later, so I'm just going to make the whole, I'm just going to try to catch that color. And then for the light side of the house, I'm going to use the same color, but maybe a little bit of yellow. And then I'm going to add some more white so that it's lighter. 
Maybe I'll bring a little more red. Let's <clears throat> get a little more white here. Gosh, that's a pretty close match. I, I think the more I'm doing this, I'm getting better at my color mixing. Sometimes bricks can be tricky. So here I've got a window. It's not exactly in the center. It's a little bit off off center. And the upper window is in the center. Okay. So now, oh, I forgot the chimneys. That's an important part. Got a chimney here. We don't want the Rankins getting cold in the winter. Let's make sure they've got their chimneys there. And there's one in the back, and it really stands out against that dark. background. I might need to... Let's see, mix a little more. That, that'll work. Okay, um, so I don't know if you remember me talking to Betsy about how am I going to bring this color to this side of the painting to give it a kind of uniform color scheme. What I'm going to do is I'm going to literally take this color paint off of the house and I'm going to put it along the bank of the river. So I don't know if you can see where the tree meets the river, there's, there's a little bit of, it looks like mud and driftwood, but it's light. It's a light color compared to the dark of the river. I'm just going to put these along the river, and that might be just enough My phone's chirping. I'm going to look real quick and see what I'm missing. Well, messages. Oh. A friend of mine sending me silly stuff. Okay. And I got an email from my friend that wishes he was here plein air painting. And he doesn't look at Facebook. So he's missing out both ways. But um, I'll let him know what I'm doing later. That's, there was a bug in the sky. All right, so now I need to paint the roof, the roof of the house, and it, it's wood shingles, and it, it kind of has a weird texture and color. It's actually bright, <clears throat> and, and I want to say it's gray, gray or, or brown, so I'm going to mix that blue and orange brown. A little more on the blue side than orange side, and then I'll add white to make it a sort of gray. 
That's pretty close to the color I was going for. Well, I'm having a good day of mixing colors. I don't always get what I'm going for on the first try, but maybe because I have that pressure of you all looking over my shoulder. I like this color so much, this gray. I might put a little bit of it in the background of the hill. Ooh, that's darker than I wanted. I might put some of it back here. <clears throat> and maybe in the sky a little bit. Um, just to get a uniformity, I think it would make a good trunk. Yeah, it might be too light to do the trunk. I might come back to that. But, um... I like to, to spread some of the colors around, so... I'm going to use that gray to make the steps. There's some famous steps. When the people escaped Kentucky and they came up the hill, there was a path through the woods, and as you get to the top of the hill, there are some steps that bring you to the Rankin house, and, and I just imagine all the people and families that were putting everything at risk to, to have freedom, and how it must feel as they come up these steps, and they're finally at the first, first stop to freedom. If I understand history right, slavery was illegal in Ohio, but if you were a slave that escaped, the owners were allowed to come to Ohio and try to reclaim their their property. And um, so even though you make it across the river, that doesn't guarantee that you're free. And people would come up to this house and they'd harass John Rankin and his family because they knew what he was doing, but they couldn't catch him in the act. He was part of a network of people, and, and someone wouldn't stay here for long. This, this wasn't the end of the road, but the beginning of the road in some ways. I really want that contrast between the house and the woods in the background. So I'm going to lay a little bit more blue down there. Oh, I forgot to put green here in these trees. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. That's a pretty bright green, Ken. You better tone it down a little. Now, I don't know how to describe what I'm doing. I'm just, just mixing some color, putting some highlights in spot. Highlights are, are like your, your lightest spots. So I'm putting highlights in the painting. Um, I don't want one flat color. I like to break it up a little bit with... Um, different colors. If you look at things in nature, they're, they're not flat geometric shapes. You have um, texture and, and um, sometimes when you look into a shadow you'll see a lot of different colors. So when I paint I want to try to do that as well and bring out some of those 
colors and, and the way light works that light bounces around so this grass might have a little bit of red from the light bouncing off the house into the grass which is kind of a weird way to think think about color but it's it's true putting some oranges in these fields. That orange from the field might look good. Oh, nope, it doesn't look good. I'm going to take that off. Let me just put some orange. All right, I'm ready to stand back. I want to look at it from a distance. So let's stand back. Oh, yeah. That house is standing out. Um, there's some things I need to work on. Looking at this, these hills right here are too light. I think that they need to be a little bit darker. Um... Lots of little details, but part of painting like this, when you're outside in nature, um, <clears throat> there, there were um, some French painters called the Impressionists, and they were some of the first painters to work like this, where they would just go out into the world around them and paint real fast, and they'd, they'd use real broad strokes and work as fast as they can to just capture the essence, or to just capture the impression of that moment. And um, this is part of that tradition of just, just trying to capture the moment. Now something real interesting is coming. A, a barge is on the river right now. And I'm not going to try to paint it. Because once, once I start, it'll probably be gone. But, but I thought you all might enjoy seeing, seeing that big old boat. Sometimes I think I'd love to have a barge, like put an art studio on the, on a barge, and you could have a little grassy lawn, and, and you could have a, a pottery studio, and, and an area to paint, and, and just kind of float down the river. One of my favorite artists is named Harlan Hubbard, and he built a little shanty boat, and he lived on the boat for... Um, at least four years and he floated from this part of the river all the way down to New Orleans and if, if you haven't heard of him he's got a few books about his life and travels that would, would be worth checking out all right I'm gonna get back to painting let me put this back on the easel I'm gonna check and see if there's any questions or comments Let's see. Oh, let me flip this around so you can see me answering your questions. So, hey, Linda says hi. Hi, Linda. 
And then Nancy says, so nice watching you. Well, Nancy, thanks thanks for watching. Uh, it looks like I've answered all the questions. If you have one, ask now, or else I'm going back to, to the painting. Okay, my connection isn't really super right now, so hopefully you can see this. All right, so I'm going to get back to work. Let me flip this around and put the camera on the painting. I definitely want to fix that hill in the background. Oh, I do have a question. Nancy wants to know, what is the dark area in the middle? So I wonder, are you talking about this area, Nancy? Or, let's see, middle, there's a house, a tree, there's some trees in the background, and then this is a hill, and this is also another hill that comes down to the river. And um, hopefully that answers your question. You say yes, so hopefully that Hopefully that answered the question. So I'm going to get back to painting. Um, if any of you have any questions or comments, um, go ahead and write them. And I, I'll the next time I take a break, I'll do my best to answer answer any questions. So I'd like this to be a little bit darker. And and I like the light 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 green. to be a little darker. I think it matches the sky a little bit too much. So let's darken this up. It's still light, but it's not as light. I need to grab a little bit of white paint Put on my palette. Okay, so for me that contrast between the sky and the trees are important, so I'm going to make this even a little lighter. This tree needs a little attention. I'm going to put some of that white along the trunk. I'll put some branches here. Hopefully it'll be easier to tell that it's it's a um, it's a tree. And sometimes the sky peeks through the tree, so I'm going to make little holes. I thought I wanted the sky brush strokes going up and down, but now I want it to move kind of like this. So now I'm going to push the paint a little bit different. All right. So 
now we need that, that um, I don't know what to call it. It's not the gutter, but it's where the brick meets the roof. There's a little, there's a white piece of wood that separate the two. Trim, it might be called trim. And then that's also on this side. I'm going to use white. A little porch back here you could just see the top of the roof I'm gonna put that there and then while I have the white out I'm gonna put some of the details of the window right here I'm, I'm not gonna try to paint every single window pane um, but I'm just going to try to get a little impression of, of the window. Now this part of the window has a little bit of shade. So instead of using white, I'm using a light blue. I'll use a light blue along here. And this is a, a wood shingled roof. It's not a straight roof like a, like a tin roof. So I want to give a little impression of the shingles. But just like the windows, I don't want to try to paint every single shingle or else this would be a multi-day project, but I just want to get the impression of them. Okay. I'm not satisfied with this tree. I'm usually really good at trees and bad at brick buildings. And today I'm having an opposite day. With the brick building, I, I feel looks great. But it's at the expense of my tree. So this tree. Needs more branches. Big branch down here. Somebody's here. I don't know if it's our friend who is coming to paint with us or, or um, somebody working on the property. Well, these guys don't look like artists. I think they're just looking at enjoying the view.
Okay, so I'm trying to put a little more detail in the trees, some texture and leaves, and I'm trying to figure out how to make this come into the foreground. You really don't need all that detail if you just have the right shape. I'm kind of inclined to just make a broad stroke of lighter green. Another broad stroke. This is all big strokes, so all these little itty bitty strokes of leaves look a little bit out of place. So I'm going to correct that and get back to the bigger strokes. And um, let me show you one of my favorite tools. <coughs> Excuse me, this is a mechanical pencil, and if I want a fine dark line, I could use this pencil line to bring out some details by scratching into the paint. And um, I can also retract the lead and just use this to scratch, scratch into the paint. It's kind of like a little stylus. So instead of trying to draw every single branch in this tree, I'm going to just scratch some things in the in the direction of branches. It'll add a little little um, a different texture instead of just brush strokes. Hopefully that looks more like a... And I can't help, but once I get to scratching, I want to scratch everything. So maybe I'll scratch those window panes that I didn't draw. I might actually use a little bit of lead under there. Oh, it's people, they're going to weed eat. So, there go the bird songs. of tree here. All right. You know what? This will make great shingles too. So I feel like I've given a lot of attention to this side of the painting, and now I need to move back here. For example, right here still doesn't have any trees, so let me get some tree-colored paint. Now that there's some paint on it, I could use my rusty trusty stylus and add some branches. 
to make it look more like like uh, trees and not just a blob of color. Okay, I'm going to get a little more dark blue and mix it with green. I want this tree to pop, so I'm going to surround it with darker color. funny thing about painting like this, because the sun moves over time, the light and the color and the way everything looks also changes over time. So you have to use a little bit of your memory or you might make some adjustments as you paint to, to match the light. But I haven't painted on this side of the canvas in a while, and now that I'm painting on it I see the colors very different. <laughs> than the last time I was here. That's what makes this fun. It's kind of like a like a kind of like a sport. You you have to really work fast and, and sometimes getting to the spot could be a challenge if you have to hike to, to get the the right view. Sometimes you take something really nice home, and other times you just take some lessons home. Trying to make some brush strokes to give the impression of trees without getting into every little detail, but just just um, just enough texture that it's not a big solid shape. I might come back with this stylus and make a couple little marks to represent trees. The painting's starting to look really good, so now's when it's going to fall off the easel. And then you all get to watch me cry. Hopefully that won't happen. But... can't help but once I get to scratching, I love scratching. What do they say about if you got an itch, you have to scratch it? I must have an itch. Okay. So now, 
Somebody stop me. Okay, stop, stop. Okay. So now I want to bring some of the river. into the trees uh oh it's the police not much I'm working on a painting I wouldn't look to her I wanted to come and see yours all right I'm doing like a Facebook live thing oh, so are you? just so you know um, if you want to Come around, you can see see where I'm at. Wow, it looks really good. Well, thanks. You're welcome. Wow. I want to just put a few stick figures on there in the front. Right? You know? <laughs> yeah, mine wouldn't look anything like that. The house would probably just be a box. That's it. Oh, that could be okay, too. Everybody's <laughs> got their way of, of expressing themselves. I'm not artistic at all. It looks good. Well, Keep thanks. Good work, man. Thanks. You have a good day, brother. I will. You too. I'm quiet because I'm resisting saying something really smart about police and webcams and current events and I'm just going to I'm just going to be quiet and not say anything I wish I didn't because it's it's too early to be funny Hopefully when I get back to my car, there's not a ticket on it. I The park is technically closed, so we weren't able to park in the parking lot, and we just put our cars on the side of the road and walked into the park. All right, I'm going to step back. I'm going to step back and let you all get a big picture look, too. It's kind of interesting when I step back and I look through the camera, I look at the painting totally different. Let me zoom in and you can see see how it's looking. I'm pretty happy with it. I still need to put the shutters on the house and I'd like to do a little bit here. Do you see right here where the light comes through the trees? I might like to do that a little bit and maybe fix this a little bit. And um, it might be kind of close to done. I don't know how much. I might just mess it up if I do much more. So let me put this back up. And I'm going to do a quick look and see if any of you have comments or questions. All right. So any questions? Um, Give it just a second, the internet's doing its thing. Well, it's still doing its thing. Hopefully you all, so hopefully the stream is still working. Okay, I'm back on. Let's see. 
So Nancy had another question. It's a little blurry. Is it two pictures? It is two pictures. I um, didn't bring a panoramic canvas, so I've just balanced two canvases on the easel at the same time. And ideally I'll frame them together and it'll look like one big painting. But this view is so wide, one rectangle canvas doesn't really give you the working space that you need. And then Greta also asked, you're working on two canvases. Yes, yeah. You know, you, you improvise and use what you have when there's some kind of a change. <clears throat> so Nancy's wondering if she's looking at the edges. I'm not totally sure. What I could do is I'll zoom in again and you could look at the painting a little bit closer and hopefully that will answer your question. Oh, okay. Nancy sees it now. And so does Greta. And then Car Carol says it's the best morning ever. Well, well I'm just honored. I, I love when art can do something like that and make somebody's morning. Um, it's made my morning too. I was a little nervous about painting after not being doing a lot of plain air painting and then to do it with who knows looking over my shoulder but I'm pretty happy about it so I believe I've answered everybody's questions I'm going to go back to painting and I, I think I'm gonna wrap it up in this next session I think I've done almost everything I, I want to do here so let's flip this around all right, we're back. Here's the Rankin house. Here's the river. And here's my painting trying to capture that majesty in, in, um, in oil paints. So, what did I say? I need to do the shutters for the house. So let me get um, like a dark green. It'll probably be a similar color to the trees. If the oil's wet enough, I could pick it up from one spot and then lay it down in another spot. Some shutters up here. Boy, my friend's really going to be mad. He really wanted to come and paint plein air. But he had to go to work. And um, I didn't know I was going to do a live stream until I started doing it. And I'll give him a hard time about not having Facebook. Because that's kind of like not having an email address. So even if he knew I was doing this, he wouldn't get to watch. But... Um, that he'd really enjoy this. I think the way his work works, he could be in the office and could have probably watched this while he was working. All right, I like my shutters. I'm gonna scratch some of that shadow on the bottom down here and down here. Oh, I'm getting into details. I'm, I want those little slats that make the shutter. And the way they've got curtains, the top of the window is dark. And then the bottom has the curtains. I'm going to make this dark. And then I'm going to scratch through it. And hopefully it'll look kind of like window pane. Not sure that might be a mess. Let's come back with some paint. What oh, there's some little stars. I think have something to do with holding the building. 
you'll see these on a lot of old brick buildings. So I'm going to just carve a couple little stars there. Okay. And then what did I say? I was going to work on the river. Break the tree up. Oh, well, we need some bright green. There's something, it might be corn growing in the field. Putting more highlights, highlights in the grass. sun's hitting the top of this path, so I'm going to get some really, really light gray. Just put a little highlight where those are being lit up. I feel like I need to bring this tree trunk out just a little more. background a little bit. Sometimes that'll make the foreground pop. this up. I'm getting a little bit crazy with the tree.
One of the beautiful things about this kind of painting, I'm just capturing the moment. And I, I could do more, but I, I feel like I've, I did what I set out to do. I feel like I, I have that feeling of being up here on this hill when I look at the painting. And um, just with, with the nature of the way that light changes and, and um, I could really mess this up if I keep going too much. That said, I might do just a little more. If I were smart, I'd take a photo of it now before I make any changes. But if you all know me, you know I'm not that, I learn everything the hard way. have to experiment and just see see what happens. I think this is it. This is it. So let me step back one last time and make sure I'm happy. I'm really happy that... Well, actually I might want to do a little more in the river, but all in all, I, I feel like I captured the day. You can almost hear the birds singing through the painting. And then here's the river. When I'm finished, I'll take a picture of this so you can see some of the details. I know the stream isn't giving you the best quality, but hopefully you could get the feel for what it looks like and, and you could have some idea of how the process worked and, and how, I, how I made the painting and some of my thought process while I do a painting. Um, I'm going to put this up and do just a little more river work. If you all have any questions or if you just want to shout out something encouraging or discouraging, um, you could do that now and when I put this down I'll answer your questions. Let's see, I've got a question. How am I going to get this to my car? This painting is really wet. And there's two panels and all of my gear. That will be interesting to see. I think that's it. So I'm going to sign this. All right, I'm really happy. Um, let me wash my hands and Flip this over. Hello. Here we go. We'll look at it like this. And let's see if there are any questions. Okay. So Harriet says, hello from Georgia. What a beautiful view and nice painting. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. And hello from Kentucky. Um, Gail says, I like it very much. Great view from up there. My daughter Valerie did Ohio River on 
four by four foot canvases. So it's eight by four on a living room wall. Wow. I'll bet it is awesome. That it would almost be like sitting by the river with with a big painting like that. I'm, I'm sure it, it um, sets the mood for the whole room. Um, Nancy says, I love it. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank you. Thanks for loving it and thanks for watching. And Liz says, it's so generous of you to do this. Well, you know, I benefit from the feedback and when I share, I'm learning how to explain my process better. It, um, I love to share and, and part of it's a little bit selfish. I think when you share, there's a joy you get from it and, and good things come back to you. So, so I'm, I'm happy to share and um, I do whenever I can. Now, I'm not sure if Betsy wants people looking over her shoulder, but we could walk over there and we could ask her if we could look over her shoulder. Um, she's pretty nice and she's a good artist, so I'll bet she'll let us look. But um, Let's see, I'm going to pick this up. Let me flip it around. And let's see what Betsy's working on. This is really a beautiful park. I'm going to pause for just a minute and enjoy these big vultures soaring and looking down at the village of Ripley. And then let me check with Betsy and see if she wants, wants people looking at what she's working on. Hey Betsy! How do you, how's it going? Well, if I could take certain pieces and put together, it would be better. Sure, so sure. We had company. I saw, yeah, the popo came. <laughs> well, he said some people threatened to burn this place. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he says he just keeps it. Oh, wow. That would be horrible. It would be horrible. Yeah, so. Wow. Anyway, are you done? I'm done. I'm done. I just, I brought my Facebook friends here to see. What you're working on, I don't know if you want people looking over your shoulder well, I'm, I'm done. I mean, or I'm, not. I'm, look, it's like it's, I messed up a lot. Okay. You know. That was my problem. I should have stuck with the tree. Uh-oh. Like I said. You know. Well, it's easy when you're surrounded by a lot of beautiful things to... Oh yeah, yeah. I struggled. That off, that has potential. That does not. I want to look. Can they look too, or do you want? I'm just saying. This part, if I would just done the Let's whole see. tree itself, like that's the whole thing. But if I just would have done, like the tree itself, and big, oh yeah, then that would have been better than that. That's just garbage there, pretty much. We'll cut it. It's paper. Can't well, yeah, you cut it? Yeah, I can cut it. Yeah, I can cut it. I'm not it. sure if this camera gets... That color looks horrible from here, but... Well, it might look People could get the idea. <laughs> the color <laughs> might... In fact, I kind of like the uh, trunk. It looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks there. great. So, but the rest, this is not good. But see, I'll show you what you can do with pastels. And they always get mad at me because I like to smear. But then you can go over... Mm -hmm. You can correct your mistakes, and already that's looking better. And then I could go in and do stuff. <laughs> Look at there. See, and then I have a bad habit. I use way too much pastel. Mm -hmm. It's looking good. I, it's better. <laughs> I was struggling with some of the same things, and just, I didn't yeah. cuss, but yeah. I felt like cussing. Yeah. <clears throat> Dealing with all that green and... Yeah, details and it's too much green. I always put color into it, but it was okay. 
All I can all. say is I know to simplify next time. Just simplify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn this off. I want to say okay. goodbye. I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to wave at everybody Bye. and say, hey, thanks for watching. Hope Happy you have painting. a good day. <laughs> Happy painting. We'll talk to you later.